Hey everyone, how's it going? I did just get out of the shower and my hair is wet and I am wearing a robe, but I hope you don't mind. I just, you know, it's, I've got that like mid February, I'll put on my makeup, but I don't feel like doing my hair and getting dressed kind of thing. Like we're, we're meeting each other halfway here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Emily, if you don't know, I put out new videos every week. I do a lot of book content, some lifestyle content. I'm an actor just hustling all the time. So basically today, something I really, really love about the winter is how <laughs> depressing it is and how little sunlight I get. The winter can be hard. Like it's, you get less sunlight, like it's cold. It's, I mean, I live in New York, so like summer versus winter here is a totally different experience. And so in the winter, last winter, I really got back into reading and it really, really helped my mood and my like stimulation, my imagination, all that stuff. And the thriller genre has just been a genre that has delivered me. It has delivered me. I wanted to share with you some new thriller books that I'm excited to read this year that are coming out this year and just kind of share a little bit about what they are, what they're about, and give you what their like average reading is on Goodreads. Yeah, I just, I really love thriller books because they just, keep you so stimulated and so interested. I love plot twists. I just love, I love getting involved with that whole dynamic. In the winter, I need something that is just delivering plot in every single sentence that's like really juicy and really titillating. I feel like I'm just gonna go back to some thrillers for the time being until it gets a little sunnier outside. Does that make any sense? I don't know, okay. I also made a book of my favorite thrillers, just like of all time that I've read, if you want to check that out. If you're just getting into reading or you're kind of just interested in starting to read thrillers, I think that that's a really good place to start because I basically just compile all of like my favorites that I've actually read. But if you are really uh, into the thriller genre and you want to know what's coming next, then this is the video for you. So let's just get right into it. The first book on the list is The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. Last year, Reckless Girls was one of the first books that I read of the year. She also did the book, The Wife Upstairs, which I have not read yet. This is rated 3.72 stars on Goodreads. So good, not like amazing, but good. As kids, Emily and Chess were inseparable, but by their 30s, their bond has been strained by the demands of their adult lives. So when Chess suggests a girl's trip to Italy, Emily drums at the chance to reconnect with her best friend. Villa Estas? in Orvieto is a high-end holiday home now, but in 1974, it was known as Villa Rosato, Rosato, and rented for the summer by notorious rock star, Noel Gordon, okay? In an attempt to reignite his creative spark, Noel invites up-and-coming musician Pierce Sheldon to join him, as well as Pierce's girlfriend, Mari, and his stepsister, Lara. But he also sets in motion a chain of events that leads Mari to writing one of the greatest horror novels of all time, Lara composing a platinum album, and ends in Pierce's brutal murder. As Emily digs into the villa's complicated history, she begins to think there may be more to the story of that fateful summer in 1974, that perhaps Pierce's murder wasn't just a tale of sex, drugs, and rock and roll going wrong, but that something more sinister might have occurred, and that there might be clues hidden in the now iconic works that Mari and Lara left behind, Yet the closer Emily gets to the truth, the more tension she feels developing between her and Chess. As secrets from the past come to light, equally dangerous betrayals from the present also emerge and it begins to look like the villa will claim another victim before the summer ends. So yeah, I just, I really enjoyed her writing as someone that was like kind of getting back into reading again. Um, it was pretty fast paced and um, I'm, I'm excited to read this one. And the cover is super cute, it has little lemons on it. Uh, this next book I actually own, but I haven't read yet. It is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, and it is rated 4.22 stars on Goodreads, which is pretty good. I feel like anything above four, I prioritize, obviously. One year ago, Isabel Drake's life changed forever. Her toddler son, Mason, was taken out of his crib in the middle of the night while she and her husband were asleep in the next room. With little evidence and few leads for the police to chase, the case quickly went cold. However, Isabel cannot rest until Mason is returned to her, literally. Except the occasional catnap or small blackout where she loses track of time, she hasn't slept in a year. Isabel's entire existence now revolves around finding him, but she knows she can't go on this way forever. In hopes of 
jarring loose a new witness or buried clue. She agrees to be interviewed by a true crime podcaster, but his interest in Isabel's life makes her nervous. His incessant questioning paired with her severe insomnia <laughs> has brought up uncomfortable memories from her own childhood, making Isabel start to doubt her recollection of the night of Mason's disappearance as well as second guess who she can trust, including herself. But she's determined to figure out the truth no matter where it leads. So this author also wrote um, The Things We Do in the Dark, which I love. It was super quick paced and a great thriller. Oh my god, if my battery dies. This, I really love also like the trope when you're in a thriller of like not being able to trust fully the main character. Like do they trust themselves? Are they lying? Like whatever. I love when like the like the protagonist is like possibly the perpetrator of like the thing. Did I say she wrote Flicker in the Dark? Cause that's what it was. I feel like I might've said something different, but anyway, moving on. The next book is Exiles by Jane Harper. This is 4.17 stars. At a busy festival on a warm spring night, a baby lies alone in her pram. That's not a term I used growing up. <laughs> her mother vanishing into the crowds. Pram? Prom? Like, what? Oh, it's British. Okay, that makes sense. A four-wheeled carriage for a baby. So it's like a stroller. Her mother vanishing into the crowds. A year on, Kim's absence casts a long shadow as her friends and loved ones gather deep in the heart of South Australian wine country, that makes sense, to welcome a new addition to the family. Joining celebrations is federal investigator Aaron Falk. But as he soaks up life in the lush country, he begins to suspect this tight-knit group might be more fractured than it seems. Between Fox's closest friend, a missing mother, and a woman he's drawn to, dark questions linger as long ago truths begin to emerge. An outstanding novel, brilliant mystery, and a heart-pounding read from the author of The Dry Force of Nature, The Lost Man, and The Survivors. I've read none of them, but um, this looks like a great book, so we love it. Okay, the next one is Live Your Best Lie by Jesse Weaver. It's 4.02 stars on Goodreads. This one looks pretty cool to me. Social media influencer Summer Cartwright leads a term life, millions of followers, the trendiest designer, and vintage clothing in her closet. A newly minted book deal. Would it would it deter you if I read all of this like Moira Rose? Probably. The coolest friends, and until recently the hottest boyfriend at her uber elite prep school. Every moment of her life has been carefully planned and cultivated to complement her perfectly imperfect online persona. She is truly hashtag living her best life. But when Summer goes missing during her annual Halloween party and an unscheduled post appears on her feed, claiming she'll be dead in the next five minutes, those closest to Summer, her bestie, her ex-boyfriend, her frenemy, and her wannabe. No, it isn't a social media stunt for attention. It's not Summer's brand, something is wrong. When their investigation leads to Summer's lifeless body, they're forced to accept that she was murdered and no filter is strong enough to mask the lies they tell themselves. It's pretty intense. Seems kind of campy though, like the description, the way the description is written is campy and I do love camp. The next one is The House Guest by Hank Filippi, Filippi, Ryan. It's rated 3.72 stars on Goodreads, but I feel like it's, I've just seen this a lot and the cover looks good, sorry. The House Guest is another diabolical cat and mouse thriller from Hank Philippi Ryan, but which is the cat character and which is the mouse character. After every divorce, one spouse gets all the friends. What does the other one get? If they're smart, they get the benefits. Alyssa McCallan is terrified when she's dumped by her wealthy and powerful husband. With the devastating divorce looming, she begins to suspect her toxic and manipulative soon-to-be ex is scheming to ruin her life, leaving her alone and penniless. And when the FBI shows up at her door, Alyssa knows she really needs a friend. And then she gets one, a seductive new friend, one who's running from a dangerous relationship of her own. Alyssa offers Brie Lawrence the safety of her guest house and the two become confidants. Then Brie makes a heart-stoppingly tempting offer. Maybe Alyssa and Brie can solve each other's problems, but no one is what they seem. And the fates and fortunes of those two women twist and turn until the shocking truth emerges. You can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you deserve. Thank you. Yeah, it looks cute. The cover's cute. I do like that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I do like the covers of the books I'm reading to, like, look cute. Okay, next is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. 4.09 stars on Goodreads. Naomi Shaw used to believe in magic. 22 years ago, she and her two best friends, Cassidy and Olivia, spent the summer roaming the woods, imagining a world of ceremony and wonder. They called it the goddess game. The summer ended suddenly when Naomi was attacked. Miraculously, she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who had hurt her. The girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes. 
and they were liars. Oh my god, I just got chills. <sighs> for decades. Oh my god. The friends have kept a secret worth killing for. Like, I have full body chills right now. I don't know what is wrong with me. Like, I need to calm down. It just... It's so juicy. Okay. But now Olivia wants to tell. And Naomi sets out to find out what really happened in the woods, no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. That sounds awesome. And like, again, cute cover. Makes me want to read it more. Just saying. The next is Every Little Sign by Michelle Pace, a 4.36 on Goodreads. Emma Gray is a young attorney with beauty she's unaware of and grit that's easily overlooked. Aren't we all? But all she really wants is the ordinary life she didn't have as a child. Don't we all? On a rainy night in Boston, she walks into a pub to meet a group of colleagues. Conversations and cocktails flow, but something more sinister is at play. Not everyone will survive the night. The next morning, she awakens covered in bruises and scrapes, yet all of her memories after leaving the bar have gone dark. The revelations to follow will change her life in ways she never saw coming. In this gripping thriller, Emma must decide who she can trust, which clues to follow, and how far she's willing to go to discover the truth. This is rated really highly, but like, this, that's one of those like descriptions that really actually doesn't tell you anything about like what the book is about, in my opinion. Like I just, I need a little bit more with the description, but it is rated really highly. So I'm excited to actually see what the book's about. The next one is I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay, 4.08 on Goodreads. A successful film professor and podcaster, Bodie Kane, is content to forget her past. The family tragedy that, mar that marred her ad the family tragedy that marred her adolescence, her four largely miserable years at a New Hampshire boarding school, and the murder of her former roommate, Talia, in the spring of their senior year. Though the circumstances surrounding her death and the conviction of the school's athletic trainer, Omar Evans, are hotly debated online, Bodhi prefers needs to let sleeping dogs lie. But when the Granby School invites her back to teach a course, Bodhi is inexorably drawn to the case and its increasingly apparent flaws. In their rush to convict Omar, did the school and the police overlook other suspects? Is the real killer still out there? As she falls down the very rabbit hole she was so determined to avoid, Bodhi begins to wonder if she wasn't as much of an outsider at Granby as she thought. If perhaps back in 1995, um, she knew something that might have helped to keep solving the case. And I have some questions for you. The author has crafted her most irresistible novel, whatever, and then it's just like praising her. That sounds really interesting. I bet she did it. I bet she killed her. I bet she got, I bet she got blackout drunk and just, and just did it. Or maybe she has like a personality disorder, I don't know. The next one is If Only She Knew by Pamela Crane, 4.26 stars on Goodreads. Peace Bloodson. Peace Bloodson? That's, that's what the name is of the character? Peace Bloodson? Okay, we're, we're making a statement with the character name. Peace Bloodson always wondered about the origin of her family's curse. Dark tales about the gruesome death of her ancestors, the founders of her hometown, Bloodson Bay, are retold, are retold, are retold in fearful whispers around campfires. Wide-eyed children search the shadows for ghosts said to haunt the townsfolk. And the abandoned manor at the edge of her family's farm called the Slaughter Shed for a good reason holds mysteries no one can explain. We're a little on the nose here with the names, guys. As the small town rumors and the body count have grown over the years, so does Peace's curiosity. When she finds a journal hidden that sheds light on what happened those fateful years ago, Peace uncovers a secret she doesn't expect. An ancient murder she and her friends must solve to lay the ghost to rest and restore her family's reputation. But as she discovers information that could cause a public scandal and tear her friendships apart, she faces a much more present danger as someone would kill to keep the truth hidden. Throw on your favorite flannel and combat boots and then dive into the 1990s throwback thriller that smells like teen spirit as a group of friends risk their so-called lives to stop a town's curse. But some threats are far worse than any curse. I'm actually not quite sure about this one. I mean, it, it is rated highly, but it only has 39 ratings and 12 reviews. Still 4.26 is pretty good. All right, the next one is It's One of Us by JT Ellison. Olivia Bender designs exquisite home interiors that satisfy the most demanding clients, but her own deepest desire can't be fulfilled by marble counters or the perfect rug. She desperately wants to be a mother. Fertility treatments and IVF keep failing, and just when she feels like she's at her lowest point, the police deliver shocking news to Olivia and her husband, Park. DNA results show that the prime suspect in a murder investigation is Park's sons. Olivia is relieved knowing this must be a mistake. 
Despite their desire, the Benders don't have any children. Then comes the confession. Many years ago, Park donated sperm to a clinic. That is not what I thought was coming, obviously. He has no idea how many times it was sold or how many children he has sired. It's <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> it's not where I thought it was going <laughs> at all. <laughs> what? He was keeping a dark secret. He donated his sperm. Like, okay. As the murder investigation grew... <laughs> murder investigation goes deeper more terrible truths come to light with every revelation olivia must face the unthinkable the man she married his father to kill her but can she hold that against him when she keeps such dark secrets of her own i don't know i'm not sure about that one i'm kind of just interested to read it to see like if it's funny i don't know i'm, I'm curious i am curious about olivia's secrets now you know what's what's olivia hiding is she one of the children? All right, the last one is The Maid's Diary, which was given a 4.43 on Goodreads by Lorith Ann White. Kit Darling is a maid with a snooping problem. She's the invisible girl compelled to poke into her wealthy client's closely guarded lives. It's a harmless hobby until Kit sees something that she can't unsee in the home of her brand new clients, a secret so dark it could destroy the privileged couple expecting their first child. This makes Kit dangerous to the couple. In turn, it makes the couple, who might kill to keep their secret, dangerous to Kit. When homicide cop Mallory Van Alst, it's a great name, great name, is called to a scene at a lectured waterfront home known as the Glass House, she's confronted with evidence of a violent attack so bloody it's improbable the victim is alive. But there's no body, the homeowners are gone, and their maid is missing. The only witness is the elderly woman next door, who woke to screams in the night. The neighbor was also the last person to see Kit Darling alive. As Mal begins to uncover the secret that has sent the lives of everyone involved on a devious and inescapable collision course, she realizes that nothing is quite as it seems, and no one escapes their past. Kind of reminds me of Woman in the Window a little bit, which I really loved. I'm actually, this this sounds great, and it's rated 4.43. This, this is probably one of the first ones I'm going to read. It's currently Amazon Prime's first reads pick for the month of February, so that's great. And it it's had... 3,700 ratings to achieve the 4.43 stars, which is pretty good, pretty good, pretty good numbers. So those are, I think, the 11 thriller books I'm looking at for 2023. I am excited to dig in. I've been in a bit of a reading slump recently just because I've been doing a lot. And so I find that when I'm doing a lot, I don't have time to read. But you can always find time to read. And I do, but it just less time and so I'm reading a little bit slower. I also read one of my friend's books that's not out yet and it was so good but I can't add it to my Goodreads like the yearly reading challenge. I can't I literally can't add it because it's not out yet. It's like not in the system. So it says I'm two books behind schedule but I'm really only one book behind schedule which is not that bad but in January I read a lot and then February I think I read like one and a half books which is really bad for me so I'm really trying to just hop back on. I've been using Libby a lot. I'm on, at, at the top of like all these waiting lists for all these great books so I'm really just trying to get back into it but you know reading slumps happen to us all so it's all good. All right my battery is about to die. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I have a lot of other book content. You could check out my book playlist as well. I'll link that here wherever it is and um, yeah let me know if you have any recommendations for me or um, requests, videos that you want me to make. I hope that you are having a lovely February and I will see you in the next one.